And the peace of the Lord be with you, and good morning. This is our devotion for Wednesday, December 13th. And um, so as we're coming toward the third Sunday in Advent, um, our, our uh, Old Testament lesson for this week is the uh, is from 2 Samuel chapter 7. And um, it, it, really interesting. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about why, why I say that. Really interesting. That kind of doesn't, somewhat doesn't fit with, with the, the epistle lesson. Um, fits in a weird way with the, well, maybe I shouldn't say weird. It's not weird, uh, but maybe more of a tangential way, tangential way with the, um, with, with the gospel lesson. So anyway, uh, yeah, so 2 Samuel 7, verses 1 through 11, and then verse 16. So um, then we'll jump into that. We'll follow the morning order, page 295 in the hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Second Samuel 7, beginning at verse 1. Now when the king lived in his house, and this is King David, when the king lived in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar. But the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling. In all places where I have moved with all the people of Israel, did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, that you should be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones on the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may dwell in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And violent men shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appoint judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house." And your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. Let us pray. Blessed God, our Heavenly Father, as you, uh, as we seek to, to do things for you, we give you thanks that you are the one ultimately who, who does for us. We, we pray that we, we would be faithful in serving you, that we would be faithful in uh, loving you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving our neighbor as ourself. And we pray that you would bless us in the knowledge that you are the one ultimately who has loved us and that you loved us by sending uh, the Son of David, by sending Christ our Lord into this world, that he would, uh, he would, he would bear our sin and in and, and his resurrection that, uh, and, and ascension that, that we would see established the eternal throne in his kingdom, not in an earthly, uh, earthly palace, but in your, your heavenly dwelling uh, where he promises to, to bring us, to raise us uh, body and soul, that we would be sanctified and live before, uh, before him in that throne, in the new heavens and the new earth, and that, that kingdom that will, will never end, as he even lives now and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, uh, so, so as I said, this is King David. Now, now if, you, if you remember the stories of, of kings in the Old Testament, the, uh, the 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 people were, were were ruled by judges, right? So uh, Moses brings them out of the wilderness, and um, and then they go into the promised land. And once in the promised land, uh, they have you read the book of Judges, or Joshua takes them in, right? And then you have the the book of Judges, where where God keeps appointing judges for them, and and the judge will call them to repentance, and they'll be faithful, and God will bless them, and and then and then they get fat and happy, and then they they turn away from him and decide that they're going to worship other gods, and 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 and, and uh, or, or that they're going to. Uh, you know, anyway, they, they, they're going to do things their own way, right? So, so then eventually they, they, they get to the spot and, and they're being ruled. And, um, uh, you know, either you have Eli and you have Samuel. And, and Samuel's uh, guiding them in the midst of this. He's shepherding them. And, uh, and they said, well, we want a king. 
And, and, and the Lord says, you know, the, 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 I have been their king. The reason they've had judges is because I'm their king. The reason they want kings is because they want to look, at, look like all the other nations in the world. But I am their king. And, and so, um, so, so Samuel makes this point to God that they want this. And, and, and the Lord says, don't, don't worry, they, they haven't rejected you, they've rejected me. And, uh, and he says, but fine, I'll give them a king. And so he gives them Saul. And then Saul ends up, he ends up, you know, he's, he's faithful at first, he ends up being a mess. Right, and so so when it should be that Saul's children will inherit the throne, then God puts a, a man after his own heart, as he says. And of course, whenever you see this imagery of it should be one person and ends up being another, I, I think that you know it should be the heir of that person, or, or it should be the, the firstborn ends up not being the firstborn. This is imagery I think that we can connect to to the, to, to the Israelites being God chosen God's chosen people, but because of their rejection of, of the Christ, then then now God grafts the Gentiles in, and as Paul talks about in Romans nine through eleven. So, so there's that imagery. So, so David is is that picture of of, of God's people in, in Christ, right? But, but, but even here, so, so David uh, is is faithful, right? Uh, now he's not perfect, right? We know we know the, the ways that he's not perfect. Um, but David is is faithful, and, and he looks around. And he says, I, you know, I live in this this fancy house. God deserves a better house than I live. in. God lives in a tent, right? Because because where's the ark? The ark's in the the tabernacle. The, and, and, and so, so there's the tabernacle that, that was established with Moses, and, and it's and it's a tent, it's temporary, and and, and 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 you know the temporary nature of it is to point to I think that there is something greater, and uh, and so so uh, so. So David talks to Nathan. If you know Nathan, Nathan's the one that when, when David sins with Bathsheba, Nathan's the one that confronts him about this, right? Nathan's the prophet. So, uh, so he says to Nathan, you know, hey, I dwell in a house, but, but the ark dwells in a tent. So, so let's build a house. And Nathan says, you know what, that's, go for it. But then the Lord comes to, to, to Nathan, verse 4, uh, and, and he says, go tell my servant David, thus, thus says the Lord, would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. I've been moving about in a tent for my dwelling. You know, this is this is what I instructed, and that's 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 what it is. So, in, in all places where I have moved with all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the judges of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people, saying, "Why have you not built me a house of cedar?" Now tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, that you should be prince over Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones on earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and plant them, so that they may dwell in their own place and be disturbed no more. And violent men shall afflict them no more. So this is, he's already giving a picture, because, because David fails, right? So we, so we always look at, at these figures, Moses, Abraham, uh, Saul, David. We always look at them and say, is this the Christ? Right? Is this the, the seed of woman who will crush the head of the serpent? And, 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 and you know, and... and um, and, and, and the Lord says, you know, well, ultimately David messes up, right? And, and so the Lord says, it's not you. And, uh, and he says, so there's going to be this promise of this place, though, where, where the enemies, you know, because, because I'm going to be judging Israel, since it's not you, um, they're going to they're make a mess of stuff. But there will be this place where finally their enemies won't be anymore. Right, and David gave a picture of that. David conquered the enemies. He, he has, he, he's able to bring peace, and that's a peace that Solomon enjoys. Right, and Solomon's a picture of of that because he's the one. He's the son of David, but he's the he's the one who fails too. Right, and so so you have all these these these, these pictures, these glimpses of Jesus, and, and then but then, then finally it comes down to it because, and I'm going to jump to verse 16 here. Finally, he says, "In your house, your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever." Right. It, it, this is this is the Lord saying, "You want to make a house for me, but I'm going to be the one who makes the house for you, and I'll dwell in that house forever." And of course, we get the picture of that with Solomon's temple, but even that's destroyed, right? And even the the, the, the fancier one that Herod the Great builds at the, the, around the time of the birth of Christ. Uh, you know, the, 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 the Lord would actually walk into in the flesh of man, right? Uh, that Yahweh would walk into in, in, in the flesh of Christ. Um, even that one is destroyed. It's destroyed by the Romans in 70. And uh, because it all points to the eternal house that we have with Christ, the new heavens and the new earth. So so how does this fit then tangentially with 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 the... the with the gospel lesson, because this is, because David, you know, it's promised that there's going to be this kingdom, 
and 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 the kingdom comes in Christ, and and it comes in this one whose whose sandal John the Baptist is not worthy to untie. It comes it comes in the one who is who is the light that John testifies to in the darkness, right? So so this is uh, and and maybe maybe there's more connection to it, but I'm I'm not I'm not coming up with it right now. But that's there, there's you know so that's the. We, we, we have this promise, though, that, that Christ is that, that, that son of David who comes. And, and that's the joy for us, is that he comes and, and, he, and he, um, he is the Christ. He is, he is the, the prophet. He is the one who, who, who brings us that eternal life uh, in that kingdom. Thanks be to God. Amen. All right, we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.